All right, good morning. September 1st, Wilcox, Arizona, TA Truck Stop service. Once again, praise God. The music is right on time. Uh, talk about freedom and praise and, whew, and uh, hanging on the cross. Heavenly Father God, you, uh, you always shine right through, Lord, because this is about you and we want to be about you. Heavenly Father God. And uh, speaking of that, uh, our group, Bikers of Christ, uh, on September 17th, is doing a down biker rally uh, to raise funds for people who wreck. Look for this flyer on Facebook. <coughs> Choose on motorcycle events. Appreciate if y'all come out. Uh, let's pray real quick. Lord, Heavenly Father, once again, yes, we do love you and we praise you. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord. And, and as we seek you and we lean in and listen, Heavenly Father, God, you speak through your word as we get into your word, Lord God. So we just lift up all hearts and minds to you this morning. And we pray I'll see you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to be in Luke 23, 46. So right towards the, right towards the end, this is, a, this is where Jesus is uh, on the cross. Uh, yeah, 23, 46. It starts in 44. It says Jesus dies on the cross. 46 came to mind a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, like me and Brother Michael and stuff, and Brother Mike, we always help. We always help people, <clears throat> and we and we do that kind of like that second song we we sing, where we just get lay, lay the problems at the Lord's feet because that's what He wants us to do. Praise God, and, and we do that because we've surrendered. We we understand that there are going to be problems, but because we're surrendered to the Lord. Even in our problems, we give our problems to him, and through, his, through him and his word, we can work these things out. Uh, praise God. And even Jesus, it, you know, the Bible says him knowing all things, knew that he had to go to the cross, but as he is our example, it says here in verse 46, it says, And then Jesus cried out with a loud voice, and he said, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathes his last breath. I think the King James Version said he gave up the ghost. <laughs> he gave up the ghost. And remember, the Holy Spirit descended on him during his baptism. And then uh, he, he said during his ministry, that I have to leave that the Comforter would come. And now the Holy Spirit, after Pentecost came and it resides in us as we become born-again believers... And we, in a sense, like Jesus is our example, even Jesus, he had to die in the physical, but it was ordered for him and now through us to operate in the supernatural, not in that. We operate in the natural, but he wants to operate through us through our surrender because he had to surrender. At some point, at some point, he had to quit doing. <laughs> even he had to quit doing. He said, I must leave. So the comforter, comforter may come. The Holy Spirit may come. See, even at some point, and you know, kind of talking about a, a, a brother that me and Mike and Michael are trying to help out. He's now in Texas. Uh, you know, at some point, they, this brother needs to quit. He needs to quit doing what he's doing because his best efforts got him to where he's at. His best two cents thinking keeps him where he's, going, where he's at. In, a, in the AA program, we, we tell people who are still addicted or, or alcoholics that you only got three outcomes, jails, institution, or death, if you keep on keeping on. So this is what the word the Lord gave me. It was about surrender and growth. It's just not surrendering to say, man, why would I serve that God? You know, that stupid saying, I'd rather reign in hell than serve in heaven. You know, it, we're, not, we're not surrendering to be whipped. You know, once again, the other song we just sang up was free, and we're free because we know him, and we can come to him with our problems. We have to, at some point, surrender and quit. <laughs> you know, do it. It was even an example in me and my wife's life this week that she said she finally quit uh, worrying about how much was it? How much money was it? $1,800. Yeah, 18, it's $1,800 that got shifted around and went to a school in Texas. I was like, what? How much? And, but she said, but I'll check one more time, you know, just to, because uh, we still have to check up with our creditors and stuff to see where the money went, you know. But she quit worrying about it. 
and then it, it, it's getting fixed. Somebody else started. Some it, it, our our petitions were heard, <laughs> and then the ears were opened on the on the on the on the natural, because bosses have to hear what their people are doing. And this this lady that she was talking to, her boss got a wind of it, and it progressed to like, oh, this isn't fair. Thank you, Jesus. You know, instead of us, you know, trying to make sure that you understand that this ain't fair. We laid it at the Father's feet. We had to surrender. And whenever we do that, that's where we that's where we grow more and more in the ability to trust the Lord. We're not surrendering because uh, we're we're scumbags and we don't know what we're doing. But whenever we surrender, we grow more and more spiritually to trust what this word that is truth and it says. And then we can apply more and more and more to it. So, you know, his final words was that I commit my spirit. And uh, in, in John 4, you know, it talks about uh, God is spirit. Get right there real quick. It's John 4, 24. So this, it says, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So here, Jesus is dying on the cross. But, you know, so John 4 is the beginning of his ministry. So, like, here at the end of Luke or at the end of John where he, where he dies on the cross is the end. But he already knows exactly what this verse is saying. He's like, I have to, at some point, stop because of the Father's will and the Father's spirit and, and be able to and dwell in my new believers who are born again so they can worship now in spirit and in truth. And we know, because <clears throat> we've learned to trust, and that's why Jesus said that my sheep know my voice. I am the true shepherd. Whenever I speak, the reason why we can know for sure it's him is because we've taken the opportunity to stop doing what we think we need to do to the best of our ability, you know what I'm saying, and lay it at his feet and learn to trust and then dig into his word and get confirmation that what we're doing is good and is helpful and is being like Christ because that's what we're being conformed to is the image of Jesus. <clears throat> and once again, you know, in order for us to finally die to ourselves, we have to look at what we're getting rid of. Ego, you know, high-mindedness, haughtiness, pride, you know what I'm saying? Gluttony, greed. What are we really getting rid of? What are we really surrendering to? What we're getting rid of is stuff we don't want anyway. My wife had a funny story. She said, uh, uh, my problem is that Satan would not only lays a bag of trash at the end of her curve, but I go out there and get the bag and bring it in the house and go through it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> but whenever we realize that for whatever reason that drove us to act in whatever manner, is is not healthy mentally, emotionally, physically, monetarily, spiritually, and we need to get rid of it. Really, what are we surrendering? What are we getting rid of? And what are we taking on? Praise God. You know, we have uh, to get rid of our old selves in order to get this new life because our best led plans keep us in this never-ending cycle. Where we just can't get rid of, and that's why we're talking about also, uh, you know, diet. Diet is a four-letter word, <laughs> but uh, in order for me to change, even where I've lost 12 pounds recently, uh, in order to do that, is I had to get out of that mindset cycle, and I had to surrender. Uh, and what was I getting rid of? Really, we complain about it all the time. All, it, Bread that they make and hamburger buns that they make is not bread. It's garbage. It, to me and my wife, it tastes like wax or, or oil or, or a byproduct. You, we can really taste it. So really, what am I get, getting rid of? A, a, a nasty, waxy product. I'm not really getting rid of anything. Now, you can make your own bread. I'm going to start to look into that you know, with the almond flour or the coconut flour or you know, and I can still have bread if I want to, but really I feel so much better, praise God, just in the natural, just doing something in the natural 
but surrendering in the supernatural. I was able to get, you know, I had to surrender first to and change my mindset. Romans 12, 1 and 2, no longer be conformed to this world, but be renewed by the changing of your mind. I even had to do that with what I eat. I don't want to call it a diet. Like I said, diet's a dirty for their word. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm surrendering and getting rid of the garbage in my life. That's the way I look at it. So in Titus 3, 3, it says, uh, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceiving, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hatred, and hating one another. You know, the, 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 the beginning part of that, I was foolish. I was disobedient to even where, you know, the Bible says that this is now the temple of God. And so these things started, even though I've read this over and over and over and over, you know what I'm saying, now it's new revelation. For another part of my life, I need to surrender and change, whether it's just eating or whatever, you know. But verse 4 says, but when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of, of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, whenever I got kingdom, we've talked about this, being, whenever I became more kingdom-minded and more concerned about godly things, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me and Mike were just talking about he's doing more stuff like right now in the natural. He's more concerned about even doing these things. But re he's making sure what he does is glorifying God first, no matter what it is. So he's got a kingdom mind to do something in the natural. You know, Jesus had a kingdom mind to do something in the natural. He had to die. <laughs> but in order for that to happen... Newness had to come out. So if he, like I said, if he's the example, that's the way we have to be. We have to die to certain things. And right there it says, and renewing of the Holy Spirit. You know, praise God. You know, the more I, the more you get into the Word and you let it, you know, like it says, the, the Word will wash you. Uh, and you, like I was saying just about Mike, it, it's something personal. You want to do it for the Lord. And it doesn't have to look right to anybody else. <laughs> it has to look right to him. Because <laughs> he's, he's the one encouraging me to do it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I had all kinds of people speaking over me in the natural about how to change what I eat. In the natural. Like, oh, I quit eating this and that and changed this or whatever. And my weight went down and my A1C went down and all this stuff. In the natural. Just had somebody else the other day in the natural speaking over me. I'm like, I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening. <laughs> you know, but uh, at the same time, I want to do whatever it is with joy. I don't want to be reluctantly like, okay, I'll, I'll just eat granola. <laughs> I go outside and suck mud like I tell the wife all the time. <laughs> I, I, I come home and the dogs are in my spot on the bed. I guess I'll just go sleep out in the mud. No, we don't want to be, we don't want to be all, you know, just no, no joy, you know, just rotten, this is terrible, I don't want to do this. No, we, we want to, he, if he's encouraging us to do whatever it is, there's clearly probably at, at every point of time, it's usually just our thinking that we have to change first, you know, and then the other stuff, it'll, it'll flow, praise God. So like I said, Jesus is our example. His flesh and life had to pass away. His will mind and emotions, it had to end <clears throat> in order for him to accomplish what the Father wanted to do. I mean, that's why he even cried out in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if, if you can't take this cup from me. I mean, he was he was in his flesh, man. It kind of, I know where I got to go, and this thing will be fun. <laughs> you know, they beat him, unre right? They beat him unrecognizable. I was just listening to two other pastors preach on the Luke 23, 46. And they all went right into the beating and everything. All, every one of them, how unjust it was that, you know, this man was completely sinless and perfect, and he got, he got the, the worst end of the stick than anyone ever deserved who was deserving of it, and he was not deserving of it. That's all they preached about. I'm like, what about 
the changing? What about the empowering? What about the glorifying his father to do his will? Jesus had to not do his will in order to follow the, the, the Lord's will. I mean, praise God. A lot of times our conversations right before this service is about what I'm talking about. It's just God is that good because he, he's in our lives and we're sharing what uh, he's doing in our lives. The old statement says, if you put God, if, if, uh, if you put yourself in God's hands, you'll see God's hands in your life. Amen. If you put your life in God's hands, you'll see God's hands in your life. And you, as you speak to other believers, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just one God, one Lord, one Spirit. And praise God, man, that uh, we can be of that. Because He is the example. And a new spirit, a spirit-led life, it, it emerges. We see where we're no longer having to bull our way through our existence. We get friends like that too. It's like, man, uh, you're just trying your hardest to make sure the outcome is your outcome. <laughs> because you're so full of fear that if it doesn't come out the way you think, you're not going to get what you want. But like we just read about, if we trust in the Lord and read His Word, we can lay the problems at his feet and it'll come out in the outcome that he wants. That's what true freedom is. That's also part of that song we sang was about freedom. You know, when, whenever we yield, whenever we listen to what the word says, whenever we get this new spirit-led life, it, it, it emerges. The, the fruit emerges through what we've been sowing. If I get up every day and I'm sowing garbage and I got to deal with this, that, or the other, and I keep trying to think that I can work it out instead of giving it to the Lord, like we just sang that song, The Battle is Yours, Lord, you know, then I'm, I'm going to get what I get because that's what I'm sowing. But if I'm sowing truth, if I'm sowing uh, the love of God, if I'm sowing that I need to yield this to you, and then let the outcome be the outcome that you desire. And uh, but do the part of the work, you know, faith without works is dead. And it's not that we have to go out and feed people, you know, or whatever, this kind of work. It's the work of yielding and trusting and listening produces faith. Show me your works and I'll show you your faith. If you got nothing but your own works, you're not having any faith in God. You're not trusting that God will work it out. So you don't have any faith because your your fruit of your works is continual, this continual craziness. In the natural, we say to do the same thing over and over and over is insanity. They say that in the natural, but faith without works is insanity. You think, you know this living God, I, I get up here and I preach the word, man, and I tell everybody about it, and your life's a train wreck. Well, I was, show me your works, and I'll show you your faith. Man, I, 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 I just got to be in control, got to be in control, got to be in control. And white knuckle it, they call that in the AA, white knuckle sobriety. You, you, you want to be sober and clean, but you just don't want to do it the way the AA big book says. And I'm going to do it my way. And you're sick. You're sick and you're rich. And your guts are all rich. And you're, you're just, you know, like I got ulcers in my stomach and I don't understand why. It's because you still think you're in control. You want, and that's in the natural. That's in the A big book. That's in the natural. But in the supernatural, we have been, if you're born again, we we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Right? We don't have to have, to, like I said, a special prayer request going on, on Facebook for, Lord, give me more righteousness. I was watching a guy preach on this. Lord, give me more faith. The, the, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. The full amount of God-like faith, the God-like power, the God-like love, the God-like endurance, <laughs> it's already in you. You don't pray for more. You have to operate it. I can teach people all day long how to ride a motorcycle or how to tattoo or how to work on a car. But if you don't do those works, all you have is knowledge. But you don't have faith in yourself. You wanted to have the knowledge to do it, but you only have faith in yourself 
that you can do any of that stuff. Well, I can't fix that. I can't do that. I'm not that artistic or whatever. You're still relying on yourself. Well, the, the, the Bible is the same way. It is a book of wisdom. And the, the difference between wisdom and knowledge is knowledge is when it's applied. Wisdom is just to say, well, I've read the Bible. How many times have we talked to people out there? I read the Bible, and I don't like what it said. We like, you read it one time. <laughs> but you ever have you ever read the owner's manual in the glove box of your car? Or for your Harley Davidson? Most people have it. So you don't even know how to operate that properly. The Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth, or biblical instructions. If you read it once and you didn't like it, well, that'd be like saying, well, I read my instructions from my car one time, and I didn't like it. I drove on the left side of the road and never used my blinker, and people do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, they take a right they take a right exit from the left lane, boom, with all four lanes and two songs. Crazy, crazy, in the natural. In the natural, they're not doing anything that looks sane. And you're going to tell me you read the Bible one time and you didn't like it. And if from beginning to end you missed out on the, the book is about one dude. You didn't like the words, but did you ever take into effect it's about one person? It's about the person of Jesus. The whole book is about the person of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And at this point, when he dies, I surely I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. He said that to the thief on the, the, the criminal on the cross. And right after that, says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So in we can think of ourselves as wretched or not very artistic or whatever. And even that song we sang, the Father does not see us. And even if he's pricking your conscience today and you're watching this, he doesn't see your sin. He sees the glory of himself and Jesus that died on the cross for you to get to this point that his will was that you come to him and Jesus had to die for you to receive that free gift of salvation. Amen. And that's what's happening here is now you're going to receive in the supernatural the person of God, the third person, which is the Holy Spirit. Not that there are three different people, but I am a father and I'm a son to my father. You know what I'm saying? And am I, I am my own person. We're all three people in one. A lot of people are like, well, I, some people are just, they call it a triune. Some people don't believe in the triune person. And some people use like an egg. You get the shell and the white and the yolk, the yellow, three pieces. And bikers, we like to use a motorcycle seat. You got a seat pan and seat foam and feet, seat leather. It's three in one, you know. You take away either part and it's not very comfortable. <laughs> get rid of the seat pan, you're sitting right on the frame, you know what I'm saying? Get rid of the leather and the foam of your head. You ever sit on a wet sponge? Try taking the leather off of a motorcycle seat. And see what I'm saying? If you take out the foam, it's just leather on metal. So the third person of God is God, and he resides in us when we're born again. And we do that through listening and relying because we learn how to trust. And we get this new spirit-filled life, and we get this new walk. And God will line up in our walk, in our new life, will line up with the word. So uh, if you want to go to Galatians 5, 1, I might read these backwards because they kind of, I, mean, I did my studying, I read these backwards and it kind of made a bigger point. Let's go to, let's go to Romans 8. It did, it just lined up, man. I was like, this is, where am I at? Where's the book of Romans? It's in here somewhere. Romans 8, 2. Come on, I had it marked. Excuse me. 8 2. It says, Therefore, or excuse me, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So we know Jesus died on the cross, gave up the ghost, and now we walk in the Spirit. And if you're in Christ Jesus, if you're beating yourself up, well, you're come, you're, you're having, you can self-condemnation. But if you're in Christ Jesus, born again, there's no condemnation. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Praise God. Uh, go a little bit forward to 618. 
Romans 6, 18. And we're going to read through uh, 23. It says, And having been set free from sin, you became slaves to righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as a slave of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. So Mary was talking about that, that never-ending circle. Right there, you're a slave to uncleanness and lawlessness and leading to even more. <laughs> it talks about that circle right there. But now we get into a new life through repentance and we get into, we get into a new circle. We get into a better circle of, of being with the Lord and listening. Verse 24, when we were slaves of sin, you were free in regard, you were free in regard to righteousness. What a fruit, what fruit did you have then in the things which are now you are ashamed? So I was talking about the fruit, the fruit of the unclean life, the unrighteous life. He's talking about here, you really start looking at your life. You, you'll see how ashamed you, that you were of how we act. But we were all that way before coming to the cross. For the end of those things is death. And that's what I was saying. Like in, in, in the natural in AA, they tell you if you keep on you know, jamming and slamming like John says, you, you, all you're going to get is jails, institutions, or death. And that's what it says right here. For the end of these things is death. You, <laughs> death of being in society, jails. Death of having a right, um, a right mind, is sticking to an institution. Or death of death, because you just poisoned yourself to death, or got in a car wreck, or someone shot you in the face for narking on them. We talked about that earlier, too. Verse 22, but now, having been set free. But now, but God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But now, having been set free from sin, you have become slaves of God. You have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, you, at some point you've got to yield. And Jesus is an example of that. Praise God. So now we can go to Galatians uh, 5, 13 and 15. I went right to that because I had it marked. <laughs> it says... Uh, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty, or freedom, praise God. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serving one another. And that goes back to like I was talking to Brother Mike. He wants to do something for the community through God. He's free to do whatever he wants, but the brother wants to serve the Lord. He wants to use his liberty for God, you know. 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware, at least you be consumed by one another. Yeah, no one wants to live like that. That's what we were talking to earlier about the gentleman we were trying to help. As soon as he helped me, he bites you. <laughs> That's true. And uh, we want to help. We want to do what's right. But, you know, at some point you get tired of getting bit too, man. So even that's the mountain you can give up. Praise God. Uh, 16 says, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So Jesus and his flesh had to die so that the spirit would come on us and we won't have to walk. We won't have to walk in the lust of the flesh. For well, the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, but so that you do not do the things that you wish. See, if I was over here in this perpetual circle of insanity, that is what it looks like. I want to do the things I wish. I'm going to bull my way through it. I'll make it happen the way I want to make it happen. I'll be selfish and self-centered until I get what I want. Right, you know, we, and, and but this is saying if you don't do that, you, you, it says that you will not fulfill. If you are born again and you're looking at the word and you're walking in the spirit, you you won't stumble left or right. You won't get into a ditch. You won't throw your darts in the wrong direction. Sin is missing the mark. 
This is saying if you're in the spirit, you won't you won't fulfill your fruit. Your life will look like that because it's contrary to one another. Mm -hmm. um, let me continue in verse 18. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Here we go. Here's this perpetual craziness. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissension, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, robberies, and the like of which I tell you before, just as I told you in the in past time, a time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I want to stop right there. Jesus said all those who practice lawlessness. And right here it talks about practicing the, the things of the flesh. And I, I did a little study on what lawlessness was. And some of these words I didn't understand in the, be in the beginning. You know, uh, but what the Lord really showed me was we might stumble in some of this stuff. I mean, David stumbled. And, you know, uh, but the word practice. Yeah. Yeah. Practice goes back to what I, that's why I said when I read this backwards, it made more sense. But I read it to you forward. But if we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, if we're in the spirit, and then even though we might stumble because we have flesh, we have a sin suit, but I'm not practicing it. Amen. And when Jesus said the same thing, all those who practice lawlessness, I was like, ooh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I, didn't, I, I just felt like I didn't have to run around going out because people say you're not, you're not real. No one's completely sinless. You know, it's like, yeah, that's because that's what the word says right there is I, I, I might stumble, but I don't have to. If I'm in the, if I'm not fulfilling the lust of the flesh because I'm in the spirit, I won't be like this next to never. I'm not saying I won't ever, but it's not that I'm sinless. It's just that I sin less. <laughs> right? But, let's go on. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit, now it's not the seed of the Spirit. I don't have a seed of all these things we're going to read that I hope one day will come out. The fullness of the fruit, like I have bananas and peaches and apples on my counter. They're fully ripened and ready to partake of. So here the fullness of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is in me. I don't need more love. I don't need, Lord, I need more joy. Lord, I need more peace. Lord, I got to put up with these folks who can't drive straight traffic. I need more long suffering and patience. <laughs> you don't need more. You have full fruit of these things. And you don't need more kindness. These people who are in my nerves, oh, Lord Jesus, I don't do these people. You need more good. You don't need more goodness. You don't need more faithfulness. It says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, is peace, is long-suffering, is kindness, is goodness, is faithfulness, is gentleness, is self-control. Against such thing there is no law. And those who are our Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let, let us not become conceit, provoking one another, Envying one another. Praise God, right there it says that if I crucify my flesh. Jesus died on the cross and his flesh was crucified. But the Father's will could be more. If I don't get out of the things of the flesh, I can't walk in the things of the Spirit. I have to look at what I need to crucify and give to God in order to be more useful. Praise God. Like I said, when you read these backwards, it's like, whoo. <laughs> so, in the very beginning, Galatians 5, verse 1 says, Stand. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not entangle again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. All that other stuff. Like I said, when I. When I was studying this, I, I got to the verses, but I said, but it makes more sense when I read them backwards. 
that if I do all this other stuff, other stuff first, we're taking a healing class and doing, and, and I talk to people, and a lot of people are like, oh yeah, but when it comes to stuff, I don't know how to operate it. I mean, yeah, you read it in this direction, but for me, it made sense when I read it in this direction. The only way I can learn how to operate is if I get in it. I can show you how to tattoo. I can show you how to ride a motorcycle. I can show you how to be a mechanic. You know, I'm not a computer guy. I'm not a technical guy. You know, but if I don't ever do those things, you know what I'm saying? There's no works. And the works here, the how to do it, is you got to die. You, you, and let Jesus be your example and learn how to trust. And through all that, you, the death of your old self becomes freedom. That's the real kicker right there. It's freedom, 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 freedom. Whew, praise God. Did I read John 8, 36? Romans 16 and 18? Yes. And these things, you know, like I said, Galatians 5, 1 says that you won't, and do not become entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, Jesus was talking about a yoke at one point. Take upon my yoke. You know, and they couldn't, they didn't have the full Bible to look at. So a Jew was talking to Jews. All right, so is it a yoke? Is it a beast of burden? You know what I'm saying? He, so in a way, it is death to self. And, the, and freeing yourself of the burden of self. Because he's the example. In order for the Holy Spirit to work. So in part, that's part of the yoke. But it's not like something super... Uh, uh, a yoke is when they put it on a bull, you know, and he's encumbered and, he, and he's enslaved and driven to perform work. It's not that kind of yoke. It's a yoke that when we learn to trust what God's got us doing. Like I said, when I asked my brother, Michael, what he's doing, and he was telling me, well, it's because God's not driving him to do that. But he's given my brother some work to do. And that's because Mike trusts the word of God, and he trusts the voice of his, of his Savior and his Lord. And he's going to have to do out without this or that or the other in order to perform what the Lord wants him to do. So there is a dying to yourself, no matter what it is, and there's a yoke. But also, the yoke in, to a Jew was uh, the, the, the priests and stuff, whenever they would pick people, uh, families, for a new generation of priests, they would pick the young boys of age to become a priest. I mean, you might be a fisherman, you might be a carpenter, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but now you're going to take on the yoke of a priest, and they're going to teach you what takes the work, work in the Jewish priesthood. And the people who didn't make it, it's like when you go to airborne school, there's 300 guys you start and 100 Jews when they graduate. Not everybody makes it. You go back to doing your family's job. If you're a farmer or a carpenter, you know, fisherman, whatever it was. You know, and because they, they didn't make it. But that's what, so a Jew talking to other Jews understand two kinds of yokes. But here, Jesus is talking about a third kind, the kingdom yoke of trust and growth and, and uh, surrender in order to have a new life. They're waiting for the Messiah to show up and have a new physical life to take away the burden of the Roman Empire. That's all they were concerned with. And Jesus is like, let me tell you about my father's kingdom. You get into this kingdom, and it don't matter what other kingdoms are doing, because my father's kingdom is bigger than all those other kingdoms, praise God. And if you come up against a problem of another kingdom, whether it's an earthly kingdom or a dark demonic kingdom, when you're born again, you have the kingdom inside of you, and you can use the word and trust and speak to whatever it is. And life will change, and lives will change. Amen. That's way more powerful than any kingdom or dark kingdom. And that's what he's trying to get at. Even the kingdom of like being a priest or a carpenter <laughs> or a tax collector, whatever it looked good to make money. You know, I'm sure the carpenters probably had pretty good money because they're always building. <laughs> you know, look at the carpenters today. 
But, but the, also the kicker out of it is we get freedom. And I, I shared this, was shared with me a long time ago, a story of uh, in the time of Moses, Moses is a, is a savior type, like a Jesus type, you know what I'm saying? He, the Old Testament was all about foreshadowing. So he has a whole group of God's people, right? And uh, even he had to die to being the prince of Egypt to go back to being a Jew. And it didn't look right. Well, how does, you know, look at Jesus. Jesus' walk doesn't look right compared to Judaism in his time. And he had to die to the Father's will to make something new. And, it, you know, to, but to the world it doesn't look right. So in Egypt is uh, sin. The Pharaoh is Satan. Why? Right? Whenever Moses had to go ask for the bones of Joseph, right? Uh, the Pharaoh kept telling him no. Well, he had work set above above him from the kingdom to do in the natural, so something supernatural could happen. Parting the Red Sea, having the the, the fire and the pillars smoke during the day, a lot of supernatural took place. You know, making the snakes out of sticks. <laughs> You're saying Moses had work that the kingdom of God was driving him to do, and he had to he had to die to. I could stay back here in Egypt and be a happy, well-fed prince, or, or die to myself and step forward. So now, Egypt is is a picture of sin, and the Pharaoh is Satan, and he has to get bones of Joseph out of a tomb. They even if even if the Pharaoh said you're all free, you can leave right now, but you can't have the bones. They couldn't leave. They had to do. They had to do it right in righteousness. They had to do stuff, just like when Jesus came to John the Baptist, and John's like, "Ooh, baptize me!" <laughs> you're right. And Jesus is like, "No, we have to do this in order." We have, you know what I'm saying? So in order for freedom to start working, even in, in Moses' time, they had, things had to be done in order. So finally, Pharaoh gave up. Joseph's bones, and now the people of God are free. Right? And they're out there in the wilderness, even though they walk around for 40 years, but uh, they're free of the bondage of slavery. And Egypt is the image of sin. Gluttony, envious, murder, right? Everything I just read. So now you skip forward to the time of Jesus. Jesus has died and put in whose tomb? It was borrowed tomb from who? Joseph. Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah. So now new bones are laid into a new tomb. Jesus, Joseph in this tomb? Jesus in this Joseph tomb? Yeah. Crazy. I don't forget the Jesus bumps is thinking about it. Huh? I just discovered the Jesus bumps. So back here, Satan, the Pharaoh, stuck his head into Joseph's tomb. And the bones were gone, and all the God's people were free. Skip forward to the time of Jesus. Jesus through surrender and death and resurrection. The bones are gone. The tomb is empty. And now we all can be free. <laughs> God knows what he's doing, y'all. <laughs> this book, if you read it one time, I want you to go back and read it about the one person the whole book is about. Praise God. God did a work for us through himself as Jesus to set us free from rivalries, contentions, bitterness, envy, wrath. Set us free from it. And not that we won't ever encounter it, but I don't have to get swept up in it no more. Mm -hmm. And that's like everything at worry. $1,800 is a big deal right now in this, in this Biden administration. <laughs> it is, you know. But uh, me and my wife have, have plenty of times that you open the old box and there's a check. Yeah. Even, when, even when we just did, what is it? Not debt. What was it? What did we just do? Bankruptcy. Because I had to care for my grandma. We incurred a whole bunch of bills. They want they wanted to allot everything that you've spent your money on in the past four or five years to see, to see if, you, if you're trying to get over on them by filing bankruptcy, and they found no fault in us, praise God. But there were, 
a $4,000 check showed up in that time. I was like, woohoo, free $4,000. She's like, no, we got to give it to, to the lawyers and they got to itemize it. I was like, man, I guess I got to die to myself. And you know, but that helped work in my flesh to do the will of my flesh wants to spend $4,000, right? But to do stuff in proper order, like God, when you read this book, he did stuff in proper order, is to die to myself and to get rid of all that other lust of the flesh garbage in order to take on the fruit, the full, ready to be partaken of fruit of the, the Spirit of God in my life. If I don't get over myself, I'll be in a perpetual garbage. And I just don't want to be there anymore, y'all. So praise God if you enjoyed that. I know I was gone last week. Thank you, Brother Mark. For uh, preaching, he's a hoot. I love Brother Mark. Did he tell you guys a funny joke? I don't think he told a joke. He usually does. But let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we love you and praise you and thank you for today. Thank you again for your word. Just be able to be in it. Thank you for your presence. Oh Lord, I just going over the the different names of God. Uh, uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. One is S H A M M A A A. A A M or something like that. I can't pronounce it, but it's a God that is ever present. Lord Jesus, you are you are always with us through the third person of God, the Holy Spirit. You are always with us, full fruit, ready to be used, Lord. Ready for us to lean in and listen to truth, Lord God, and to operate in truth. And whoever the Son sets free is free indeed, Lord God. And that's what it's talking about. It's not talking about free from oppression from the Romans or dark Brandon. But Lord God, being free in you, that we can operate in peace and operate in other people's lives to show them the peace that you've given us and they can have it too. And then they can be free. It's like the old commercial. Then they tell two people, then they tell two people, and then they tell two people. We just want to be somebody who's a nobody, but we want to tell everybody about the one somebody who saved my soul, Lord God. Again, that song around time. We love you and praise you and thank you for all this. In your son's name is Jesus. Amen.